Hello racing fans and a warm welcome to uh, Trackside, proudly brought to you by World Sports Betting. Bet with the best, bet with WSB. Well, I uh, trust that everybody is fine as always and uh, hopefully you had a fair week punting and uh, this weekend, well, it's uh, bumper action and uh, it is uh, the feature race day at uh, Gravel on Saturday, of course, featuring the two big ones, the main events for the three-year-olds, the Daily News 2000 and the Will Havington 2000. And the supporting feature is the Stayers race, the Lonsdale Stirrup Cup. There is racing at the Big T on Turfantine on Sunday, but... Uh, because it's feature race now and everything moves over to KZN for champion season with lots of high class action, we are going to concentrate on the Saturday's card. So I had a good look at Saturday's card. It's 10 races. I think they got a big six carryover of a million rand as well. That estimated pool will be 5 million rand and all the action will be at Gravel on Saturday. And that's a race meeting that we've had a look at and we've picked out four horses to follow so where we go with those four horses at gravel on saturday and now they will begin early it will begin in race number two and uh, this horse called ensuing from the vaughan marshall stable uh, debuted in cape town and uh, you could see on that debut finishing somewhere behind close to eight lengths uh, back uh, in that field over 1200 meters and it was an outsider as well but uh, that replay uh, of that race, if you watch it, doesn't uh, so. If you watch that race, but you need to watch the replay, it doesn't tell a full story because uh, this horse was very dumb and very green. It was certain to come on with that run. They didn't give him another run in Cape Town, and uh, they brought him to KZN, and he, he debuted in April. Uh, the exact date was 14th of April, and he found solid bidding support that day. And I remember trainer Vaughan Marshall was quite confident that he can pull it off first time in the province as well. He went off as the even money favorite, and uh, there were excuses. He was reported lame, short ride four, and he finished fifth. He wasn't too far behind the winner, in with a chance. Uh, that run was on the poly track as well and he's obviously a horse that i feel having watched him on the poly now fair enough there were excuses with regards to his you know him being reported lame but i think now back on the turf drawn one they've gone with the blinkers the distance was not going to be any issue at all if anything it's going to suit him much better than the 1400 meter trip last time out i can tell you that he's been in the noms a few times and he hasn't taken his place because he's had poor draws. So uh, Vaughn Marshall has clacked the prom draw here of uh, one. And uh, now with Anton Marcus not riding, well, he's got a very informed jockey. Grant Fanica is riding so well, and he gets the chance here on number one ensuing. So we're hoping that he is not too green around uh, the gravel turn. But from draw one, you know, you can just place him wherever you want to and we'll leave that to Grant. And I just think the fact that there was lots of confidence from the stable, the betting support was clear to see last time out. That run would have brought him on a ton and hopefully he can get us off to a flying start and uh, track side with our Ford to follow a race to number one ensuing. Then I'm going to tip in the two features. We have to go with the two features because uh, those are the main events, as I mentioned. And race number six is for the three-year-old fillies. And it is the Willavington 2000. It's for a stake of 750,000 Rand. And um, I'm going to go for a very interesting runner here. A filly called Light of the Moon. And uh, with a rating of 76, she was put to the test when uh, the stable raced uh, in uh, the world's by uh, the oaks uh, at a penultimate start and uh, that was the race of a career she certainly ran the race of a career that day and it was a clever tactical ride by muzi yearny enterprising ride you had to be said he went to the front he dictated he tried to skip and uh, she led for 2250 meters of the race she was only caught the last furlong she was beaten by an absolute star, the winner of the Triple Tiara in Rain in Holland, but she was certainly not disgraced. And you can see she punched way above her weight, and rightfully she was pushed up in the ratings as well. She now races off at 92. We know that Rain in Holland has since gone on to win the Group 2 Jeroen Rosenberg stakes, and this filly went on to show that, you know what, 
that run that uh, she put up in the South African Oaks was certainly no fluke and she won really well. A deserved favourite, a strong favourite last time out. She won at the Vault Classic Tack over 2,400 metres. Same tactics to the front and she did it very, very easily. Now from that form line you saw midweek, if you missed racing midweek, I can tell you that uh, fifth in that race around eight lengths back was a certain Snow Palace that came through to win midweek at Gravel. So that form line is looking good from her last start. And when I looked at this field, you know, she wasn't uh, uh, one that uh, you know, I, I took lightly because she was not in, entered in the Will Lavington. Of course, after the unfortunate scratching of rain in Holland, uh, she was then supplemented. And I think it could be a very, very smart move from the stable there, supplementing this filly who's got the credentials to not just make up the numbers in this field and not just make up the field, but to really compete because this course is going to suit her perfectly. She is now... A front runner. Now that they've changed tactics with her, she didn't show so much a pace and speed prior to her last two starts, but something has happened. Muzieni has seen that she's got early pace and speed. Why not use it? And from draw four, I can just see this filly jumping out because there is, uh, you know, whilst there are some runners that, that show pace, that show early pace, I think there's they're none going to match her for that early pace and speed. So I expect her to be in front. And the fact that she gets 2,450 meters, she's not going to be coming up for air when they turn into the short uh, gravel straight. She's going to be running all the way to the line. And I think it's a smart move for Byron Bortis uh, to uh, enter her in uh, this uh, field or supplement her in this field. And I want to have a look at the world sports betting pricing, anti-post, and then when the final field was declared. Uh, she's currently trading at around 7 to 1, and I feel that's generous odds about the filly because she has run close up to rain in Holland, would have been deep in the red to win this race prior to her scratching. So, number four, light of the moon. Some tremendous value, I think, here in race number six. Then we move along to uh, the Daily News 2000, and this we'll call uh, the main event. This is over 2,000 meters. It's for a stake of 1 million rand, and you could say that uh, the, this is, you know, some of the best of the three-year-olds that will be taking their place in this race. The race has lost a bit of gloss with the scratching of double superlative, who I would have definitely be tipping as my top choice, but. We're now going for Pomp and Power, the stable companion, a Group 1 winner down in Cape Town. We saw him win the Cape Derby and he won it in fantastic style, showing his class. And uh, he's beaten the best of the best in Cape Town. No doubt about that, he is arguably one of the better three-year-olds coming out of Cape Town. Although Double Superlative will not take his place in the Daily News. And of course, the July this year, he's the highest rated three-year-old uh, in the country, but he is no more now. Uh, this horse, Pomp and Power's first start here in the province was in the Guineas and uh, he overcame the draw. Draw 10 out of 14, raced him up handy, Richard Free gave him a confident ride and he wasn't tiring. Uh, he was fighting all the way to the line and you could see maybe he would have just needed that run as well. And it's over a distance that I feel is short of his best. 2,000 meters and maybe plus is going to be... Uh, what's going to suit him much better, number one, pomp and power. Now, he is the best, or one of the best, out of Cape Town, and he's taking the three of the best runners from Gauteng. I say the three of the best because we got uh, the World Sports Betting Guineas winner in the field, who is safe passes, the World Sports Betting Classic winner in the field, who's Red Saxon, and the World Sports Betting Derby winner in the field, who is... Aragosta. So he's taking on uh, the, you know, the cream uh, that's coming down from Gauteng and it'll be interesting to see how you compare and match the form on the day. Pomp and Power versus the Guineas Classic and uh, the Derby winner here. So we'll see how he goes here uh, against this type of field. How you see the race is going to be run? Well, it's clear for me to see. The way he raced last time out uh, when he overcame the draw, he's drawn pole position now. Uh, I can just see Richard Furry jumping him out, having him favorably positioned, turning to the straight. And if that last start has brought him on, well, he will be a hard horse to beat. Very interesting that he is the ruling anti-post Durban July favorite. And he's a strong one at that if the betting is to be a guide because he's around 5-1 to one in world sports betting. 
and the next best in the betting market is 10 to 1. So he's off the odds of the next best in the betting market and if you compare his odds for this race, well he's 9 to 10 on World Sports Betting at the time of recording the show which is you know just to the latter part of the week and a horse like Safe Passage is 12 to 1 Red Saxon is 55 to 1 and uh, this horse Aragost is 20 to 1 uh, for the July so if you're going to compare these odds to what they got him for the July then he'll have to win this and win this well he'll have to win against these three year olds very well to justify the price that they got him for the Durban July at this stage which is around 5 to 1 but all said and done he's the right horse in the race I'm expecting him to win and hopefully he wins well and confirms that he's a 5 to 1 shot for this year's Durban July then we move along to our last of our four horses and that comes up in race number 8 and this is a merit rated 97 handicap over 1200 meters and I'm going for a horse that certainly caught the eye and the imagination quite early in his career because he's a striking grey, he's actually a white horse this after the rain he won uh, four on the bounce which included three over 1200 meters then they stretched him over a mile what a ride by Samanga Kumala that they start to finish at Gravel then they decided well let's go to uh, Cape Town and maybe try and campaign with him there his first run was an excellent run behind Look for Hounds Look for Hounds has since been a subsequent winner and it wasn't a plan of trainer Garrett Van Zyl to race him in the Queen's Plate but when he cracked a good draw the owners uh, twisted his arm and said well we like a uh, a runner in one of the most prestigious races in the country, the Lorme Rounds Queen's Plate, and he took his chance there. He was way, 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 you know, out when you have a look at the quality that he took on. But again, you know, he said his fractions up front, he ran to a point, and then he faded tamely in the running. But it was just a, you know, an experiment and something for the owners to cheer home about that they had a right runner in the Lorme Rounds Queen's Plate. Well, he's back in the province. He's back over his favorite distance and he's back at a course that suits him fine because he is a, a strong front runner and the way he races, just the manner in which he races, I can see him going to the front and, you know, just stealing the race at around the 600 meter mark. He's got so much of early pace and speed this horse. He can win his race in, in the first 600 meters and then when they turn into the straight, if he's got a sizable lead, he looks very difficult to catch when he is on song. I say when he's on song because he is coming off a break. He is, has been campaigning in Cape Town, so there will be a few uh, question marks with regards to his fitness, his well-being, how ready he is. And of course, Anton Marcus is not riding him, so we wait for a jockey change as well. But I'm just uh, hoping that everything is going according to plan with his preparation, etc. And uh, if he brings his A-game to the track against this type of field, whilst there's lots of form to work around, he's the fastest horse in the race when the starter says go. So from draw four, whoever's going to be riding him is going to have an, an easy lead coming into the final 400 meters and hopefully he can be running all the way to the line so that is after the rain in race number four right that is a wrap we've given you four horses there'll be two trebles up on the world sports betting menu we're going with ensuing light of the moon uh pomp and power and after the rain those will be the big four to follow on trackside and i trust that you're going to have a wonderful weekend there is great racing to look forward to coming to from gravel and of course on sunday if you want to have a go you can have a go at turfantine as always on behalf of world sports betting the sponsor of trackside thanks to all the customers and all the punters but more importantly to you for your continued support as the valued punter and until we meet again you have an awesome weekend find all the winners hopefully make a sizable profit as well Salani